Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is 630. Uh, welcome to the Fort Dorchester Rising ninth grade scheduling information night. My name is Trip Aldridge and I am the principal at Fort Dorchester High School. So excited to welcome you guys in. A uh, little unorthodox this year, uh, not able to meet you in person and see you face to face, uh, but we are excited nonetheless. Uh, you are about to embark on an important step in your child's education. Uh, we have everyone here tonight to share a little bit of information with you about what to expect when coming to high school. Um, your, your eighth grader will be doing their IGP, their individual growth plan. Uh, that's going to be done along with their counselor um, in a meeting uh, starting soon. And we wanted you to have this information and be well informed when you're making decisions and choosing your coursework. Um, you'll find out through the course of our presentation tonight uh, some of the differences, uh, just like there were differences in how scheduling worked between elementary moving into middle school. There'll be some differences from middle school moving into high school um, that you're going to want to be aware of so you can determine the best solution, the best choices uh for you as, as students and parents when you are planning this out and, and we think it's important that you have all of this information um, available to, to you because really you're not just making a decision about next year the choices you make going into your freshman year are going to set you up for all of the classes you'll take throughout your four years of high school and so there's there's a little bit of a thought that needs to go into this in terms of long-term planning and using this information. Not that every choice you make right now is, is going to uh, be set in stone or completely determine the future, uh, but it will uh, set you up, open some doors. Uh, so you do want to think it through a little bit before you just choose um, any random assortment of classes. You want to pay attention to what you think your goals are and where you think you might want to go. And, like I said, that can certainly change with interest over time. And as you learn more about certain things, you may want to do some uh, some changes along the way in your IGP each year. Uh, but having a good idea where you're going, what you think you want to do uh, as you get through high school uh, is going to be important for setting that up tonight. Um, so we have some of our uh, illustrious leaders with us here tonight, our ninth grade administrators, uh, ninth grade counselor, are here along with Ms. Duplantis, who is helping us uh, do all the technical work behind the scenes for this online meeting. And I am going to step aside and let them lead you through the important information that you need to know. Um, we will be collecting your questions, have an opportunity uh, to find that out and, and hope to be able to share information back with everybody uh, as we answer all of the questions you might have tonight when we go through this information, we'll make our presentation and the answers to those questions available to you. So it looks like Ms. Prophet is ready to take the lead and we'll turn it over to you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I see that we've reached over 100 attendees, which is fantastic um, for us being all virtual tonight. So I appreciate your time and um, this will definitely be well worth your time tonight. Um, as the purpose is to make sure that you guys are well informed walking into your child's eighth grade IGP meeting, which is all about setting them up for success during their high school career. So um, I want to welcome you to the Fort family. Again, I am Megan Prophet. I'm one of the ninth grade administrators, but I'm also the master scheduler for the school. Um, so kind of a, we will wear lots of different hats over here. Um, so you'll be working with me in lots of different ways. Um, I do want to address if I do have any current ninth grade families on tonight. So you're already here, a part of the Fort family, and are already going through your ninth grade year. Um, that is not this information tonight was delivered to you last year in a rising ninth grade night. Um, so this information is not tailored to you. This is more so for our uh, rising ninth graders. Um, so I, I wanted to address that very quickly. And then I'm also going to go over so just some quick business rules on how we're going to handle things tonight. Um, and then we will get started with the presentation. So um, questions, we've already had um, at least one question come in tonight. There is a Q&A feature. Um, please feel free to type in your questions. We do have people that are monitoring that and will be answering questions for you throughout the presentation tonight. Um, a lot of the questions will be answered. 
I wouldn't suggest that you wait till the very end to, to send in a lot of questions. So feel free to type them in as you go. Um, if you have to leave early, no worries. We will have a recording of this presentation along with um, a typed out handout for all the questions that are asked and all of the answers that were provided. Um, also, don't get nervous if you get an answer that says something to the effect of, we will be posting that answer at a later date. Sometimes questions may inv um, involve a more uh, lengthy response. And so we wanna make sure that we give you all the information that you need. Um, and so we don't wanna bog ourselves down with giving lengthy responses. So we will answer that question, just we will post it with the document later this week. Um, at the very end of the presentation, we will post um, our contact information for those of us that are here tonight and who to reach out to if you have further questions or if something comes up in your child's IVP that you have questions about, we are here to help you. Even though you're not quite with us yet, we are here to support you and help you and get you started on the best track for Fort Dorchester. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So tonight you're gonna learn about um, the high school diploma requirements and everything that um, uh, through all of our four core areas and then our elective choices, which is what a lot of the students get really excited about. Um, but they're both equally important. We want to make sure that you have a good comprehensive understanding of all the different levels of our core areas, along with the variety of electives. How many can a freshman take? How many should a freshman take? What levels are they? Are there any prereqs for those classes? We're going to go into all of that tonight. So our next slide here lists out all of the high school diploma requirements. Um, you can see, I'm not going to read this slide to you. You can see everything that is required here, and this is a good, um, a good reference for you to have if you want to snap a picture of it with your phone to keep for later, that would be great. Um, one thing that you want to make sure that you take note of, there are 24 credits that are required. Um, over on the right-hand side, we do have four classes that we have in EOC which is called our end of course exams. Those are state exams that we are mandated to give every year. Um, the biggest shock coming from middle school to high school is that students have a cumulative exam at the end of a class that's going to count 20% of their final grade. Um, for those of you who are new to high school, this is a significant change from middle school to high school. Um, and our, our middle schoolers that are currently taking high school classes there have that same requirement. Um, they're used to taking end of the year exams and big tests and state tests, but they're not used to it actually being a part of their grade. Um, so it's always a, a big shock for them. Most of our freshmen come in and they do have that Algebra 1 um, EOC. Some of them may also have the e uh, English 2 or the Biology. U.S. History normally doesn't take place for their junior year. So this is showing you, we have the high school requirements, but this is exactly what we also want to look out for students who are planning to go to college. So um, there's only the three sciences required, but when they want to go to college, you want to make sure that the sciences that they're taking are lab sciences. So some of the sciences that we offer are not specifically lab sciences and your middle school counselors and your high school counselors as you're going through your IGP can help you differentiate between the two and make sure that you're taking those lab sciences um, to, to make sure that you're ready for colleges. Um, World language, you need to take two at least at minimum if you're planning to be a college student. Um, some colleges and universities do require three. So um, we do encourage students who know they're going to college to go ahead and take three so they're not limiting themselves if they decide to change their university last minute or their college last minute. Um, and that new one may require three languages. Um, we need the four credits of math, one that has to go higher than Algebra 2. Um, a fine arts elective, and then that in college entrance exam, the SAT, ACT. Um, Acuplacer is more for a two-year college, uh, try to tech community college. And the ACT and the um, SAT, good news is, is that all of our students have an opportunity to take it for free during their junior year. They can choose one or the other. Um, but you can also have more than one opportunity to take that as you see fit. All right, so let's dive into English. Um, ninth grade English option, options. So here's a list of all of the different levels that a freshman could go into. Um, and I'm gonna go into each one a little bit more in depth. So an English 1 CP, this is your, your standard run of the mill where a lot of our students are gonna fall. Um, understand that CP is a college prep class. So you'll, you'll hear that acronym quite a bit. Um, and we're really just looking for them to have passed um, eighth grade ELA. Um, English 1 honors, we obviously wanna make sure that they've passed um, 
English or eighth grade ELA. Um, maybe they were in the GT option for eighth grade ELA in middle school. And we want to make sure that they have um, good writing skills and their, their re reading skills. We do have um, more lengthy writing assignments and reading assignments in that class. Um, English to CP. So this may be a student who took English one honors during their eighth grade year. Um, and they may be choosing not to continue on that honors track or honors may have just been a little bit too uh, fast or too rigorous for them and they want to drop back to a CP um, track, which is totally fine. Um, and then we have English two honors and this is for a student that has successfully completed English one honors um, and they want to they want to reach that AP level in English classes. So we're looking for them. They will eventually get to a point where they've done their English 2, English 3, English 4, um, and could be looking at taking AP English classes by the time they hit their junior and senior year. All right, um, so our other options here are English 1 and freshman seminar. So this is one of our intervention classes. Um, and basically you take freshman seminar first semester and then English one second semester. And what this does is it's really working on spreading that English one out over a longer period of time and allowing teachers to go more in depth um, and build students reading and writing skills um, in order to set them up for a better success in English two, which is one of our EOC classes. Um, and so there will be students that are sometimes placed into these intervention classes. Um, not always necessarily recommended by a teacher and we look at multiple data points. So it's not just your students grades we're going to be looking at. We're also going to be looking at their RI scores, their MI scores, SE ready, the SE pass. We look at lots of data points when we start to determine intervention placements. So remind your eighth graders that they need to be taking those um, those assessments very seriously. Um, because the high schools will be using that data to place them. And this is one of the places that we might actually end up putting them um, in order to help them be more successful the following year. The good news is, is that there's no reason to be worried about them being behind or anything like that because of that freshman seminar class. Um, freshman seminar counts as an elective. And if you remember that high school graduation slide or the high, high school diploma requirement slide, you do have to have those seven electives. So it's still counting towards graduation requirements with no problem. So next we're going to move into um, our math options. So here is a listing of our math options for our ninth graders and I'm going to dive into those. So the first one we have is transitions to algebra and uh, math assistance combo. So transitions to algebra is a rather new class um, for your group. We will be going into our third year. Um, I'm very excited about this class. It creates a lot of opportunity for our students that math is just not their thing. Um, we know that there are students out there that really struggle with math um, and it used to be our old pathway. Students would all start at Algebra 1 and then go Geometry, Algebra 2 um, and then would land in either like a Province Stats or an Algebra 3 their senior year. Well, what we're seeing across the state um, is that students get to Algebra 2 and really, really, really struggle. Algebra 2 is our hardest course. Um, it honestly has one of our higher failure rates across the state um, and it can be the class that holds a student back from graduating high school. Um, so with the implementation of transitions to algebra, it actually starts them um, at that level. That's their first math class and it does count as a math credit, which is fantastic. They also will get that elective credit with their math assistance class. Um, but they will start there and then their sophomore year they can take algebra one. And then their junior year, they can take geometry. And then their senior year, they can choose to take algebra one if they would like, I mean, I'm sorry, algebra two if they would like to, or they can pass that and go ahead and do province stats and that be their fourth math and be done with their maths for high school. Um, so I'm really excited about that class. We do do a lot of data, um, look at a lot of data for students to be placed into that course. Um, our next level is our algebra one. Um, and you may also get an Algebra 1 Math Essentials combo. So similar to the previous level that I spoke about, you'll get an elective credit, but you'll also be starting at that Algebra 1. So we're still looking at those data points to make sure that we're setting students up for success. Considering that math is so um, foundational and it builds on top, you know, if you're lacking a lot of those um, 
basic skills in algebra, we'll see a, um, a huge downfall in that algebra two level. So we wanna, again, use that math essentials to build students uh, pre-algebra skills up. Then we have the algebra one honors. And so we're looking at that successful completion of uh, math eight. I know that this year they um, implemented a new uh, GT level of math eight, which is, is new to us. So that's exciting. Um, so that might be a place that a lot of those students are looking to go to get on that honors track. Um, just remember that we're looking for students that are able to keep up with the pace, the rigor, um, and the depth in a true honors class. Um, our other math levels that we're looking at, we have our geometry CP and our geometry honors. So this is the level that we're looking at for our current eighth graders who are taking algebra one honors right now in middle school. Um, so depending on their teacher recommendation um, on whether or not they're gonna continue on that honors track or that some of them may be deciding to slide back to a CP track um, to um, start their high school math track. Um, and then our last grouping, we have that Algebra 2 CP and then the Algebra 2 Honors. Um, those are the two options that we're looking at for our students, our eighth grade students that are currently in geometry in middle school. Um, again, looking at those teacher recommendations and looking at your data to make sure that we're placing you in the best place, whether it's CP or Honors. Okay, next we're gonna dive into science. So we really only have two options here, Earth Science or Biology Honors. Okay, so earth science, you're looking at either the CP level or the honors level, all right? So, you know, the biggest difference between the two is again, the, the pace and the rigor. And I will say for the earth science honors, we're, we tend to be looking at students that are more on the honors track um, and able to keep up with more honors level work. Um, the highest level here we're looking at is the biology honors, okay? And so there's a highlighted section there that I wanna make sure um, that we cover tonight. So it, it can be taken with a teacher recommendation. Um, so you're skipping that earth science level, you're jumping to biology. Um, and we're looking for two things for students that do this. Number one, they have already completed algebra one honors. It must be already done and completed successfully. And the other thing is, is for a student that is doing this, we, are, we have an expectation um, and really you're fast forwarding your sciences so you should be a student that is looking to take AP level science classes here at the fort. Um, so if you're not ready to, or thinking that you're gonna be an AP chem or an AP um, bio or AP physics student here at the fort, I would not recommend fast forwarding your science track. Um, so again, just that highlighted portion, that's something that always comes up with parents as we get closer to the start of next school year, algebra one must be completed. Um, in order for a student to go into biology. All right, social studies. Again, we really only have the two options here. So we have the World Geography CP, World Geography Honors, um, the two levels. We're gonna be relying on those um, eighth grade teacher recommendations and looking at data points to make sure that you're in the appropriate placement. Um, and then we have our AP Human Geography. So AP, um, it stands for advanced placement, and it is our highest level of classes that can be taken here at Fort. Um, it is a college level class. Okay, so I'm gonna say that again. It is a college level class. So yes, your ninth grader is taking a class that could potentially be earning them college credit with a passing score on the AP exam that's administered by the college board at the end of the school year, okay? which is why if you look at that second bullet point, it says successful completion of English one honors. We need to know and see that your student is performing adequately at a, in a high school honors class before we could ever place them in a college level class. Um, and English goes hand in hand as there's a lot of writing, there's a lot of researching, there's a lot of projects that go into this AP human class. It is a fantastic class and there's a lot of students that go into it and do very, very well, but that English one completion, successful completion is critical. Okay, so we're gonna jump now into more of our elective options here at the fort. Um, I wanna make sure I hit some of these bullet points just in general about the um, electives, and then we'll dive into each um, category more in depth. So, 
next year the students are only going to be able to choose three electives um they will have their four core areas they'll also have a required class of high school 101 which we'll just talk about we'll talk about here in just a minute um and so that leaves three elective classes of their choosing um they can choose alternate classes just in case one of their classes um, that they're choosing one of their top classes may not be available understand that in the high school we have to go by seniority so you know seniors will get the first choice in classes and then juniors and sophomores and then our freshmen unfortunately are the low men on the totem pole when it comes to some of these elective classes and as they still have multiple opportunities to take these classes where seniors and juniors are starting to run out of time um, so choosing a lot um, alternates and really being okay with the alternates that you choose because it's pretty likely you're going to end up with one of them um, is really really smart um, the last section on here it's a it's a lot to take in right now, um, but this is something I do want to put on everybody's radar so it does not catch you off guard when you hit your junior and senior year. Um, there are a lot of privileges when you get to your, your senior year, um, one of them being an early dismissal, so you're able to finish your day after second period or after lunch. Um, and that's really exciting for some of our seniors that are really interested in that. And a lot of students really work hard towards earning that status. Um, one of the requirements that um, is rather new, it's kind of more with our implementation of our uh, the new report card that has come out, is a college and career readiness. And so there is an indicator that students must meet in order to be considered college or career ready by the state of South Carolina. In order to earn the privilege of having like an early release as a senior, you must meet one of the requirements of being either college or career ready. And there's lots of ways to meet those indicators um, for career readiness. One of them, one of the easiest ways is to be a completer in some of our um, CTE pathways. And so, you know, if you weren't wanting to be an engineering student, actually working through our courses um, of our engineering, we've got the biomed pathway, we have sports med, we have business, we have marketing, we have lots of different pathways. But having you actually work all the way through um, a planned out pathway that we have to take these required courses in order to be a completer will really help your chances of, of meeting those requirements in order to earn some of those privileges your senior year. So something just to kind of keep in the back of your mind, you still have plenty of time to take those classes. Your counselors will be talking a lot about pathways, completer status. Um, certifications, there's a lot of things that come into it, but we wanted to go ahead and start making you aware from the very beginning that this is a privilege that you're going to have to work towards and you're going to have to meet some requirements along the way. Okay, so the first required elective, all ninth graders, all ninth graders, and this is this year, this current year, is the first year of its implementation, High School 101, um, and so next year we'll be in our second year, and all ninth graders are required. No questions asked. Um, and it is covering so many bases. And I will tell you, um, we have been thoroughly pleased with the performance by not only our current ninth graders, but also our teachers in the High School 101 course. We are building incredible relationships and able to finally talk to students about things that honestly, we just don't always have time to talk to them about in our math class, in our English class, in our science class, because we're so, um, so rigorous and having to move through things. And, the transition from middle school to high school is huge, guys. It's huge. And, and coming from a middle school background myself, even as an adult, it was a very significant um, transition for myself. So for students, we see it every year. Um, and so this class has really been helping them get adjusted and learn the ways of high school um, while also going over um, and reviewing a lot of the, um, the items that you see here, the topics listed. So again, this is a required course. All ninth graders must take it, no questions asked. So the next one we're going to go into is um, PE, ROTC, or Marching Band with PE. So this is new, that last one. It's always been for years. you got to either take PE or ROTC, PE, ROTC. You've got to take one or the other. Well, now we've got a third option. And so for our students that are in band, um, we know the rigor um, and the, the, the physical side of being in marching band. Um, and they have now approved um, for us to have a course called, and the course is called Marching Band with PE. So um, you are able to now take one of those three 
courses to meet that health requirement for our high school diploma, okay? Now, speaking on the marching band with PE, let me dive into that a little bit more. That is for students who are in our marching band, which all band students, all students who come to Fort Dorchester High School and take band are in the marching band. No options, okay? Say that again, if you are in band at Fort Dorchester High School, you are marching, okay? You are also required to take two band classes. So you would take marching band with PE your fall semester, and then band one or band two, depending on whether or not you earn that band credit in middle school, second semester, okay? So band students, you can earn that health requirement by getting marching band with PE. You are also required to take a second band class here at Fort Dorchester to be in band all year, okay? If you are not a band student and you're more of a PE or an ROTC, those are still very traditional courses. Um, you have your PE one that we are looking for students to have before they move into those weight training classes that are more specific for different athletics. Um, ROTC, we have a fantastic program here at Fort Dorchester High School. We are very proud um, of our program here. Uh, lots of opportunities for students to have leadership, um, uh, ranger status, all kinds of different promotion opportunities. We are hoping to bring back ground school here soon. So there, there's lots of options for them in ROTC if your child has any interest in the military. One note I do want to make about ROTC, especially in today's day and age where um, colorful hair is um, much more prevalent and popular. And I love blue hair just as much as the next person, but please understand there are grooming requirements for ROTC when they wear their uniforms. And blue hair, purple hair, rainbow hair is never going to pass inspection, okay? So students cannot have off-colored hair. Um, they must also meet um, haircut requirements. So please make sure that your child is understanding that there are weekly uniform requirements and that they must meet the grooming expectations, which could include haircuts and, and uh, an elimination of, of off hair colors. All right, so diving into our CTE. So these are some of the classes that I've mentioned a little while ago about pathways um, and, and business classes and things like that. So um, I'm gonna go through a couple of these very quickly and just hit some high points on each one, which ones are more popular, those kind of things. So the two that actually meet our computer science requirements on this list are fundamentals of computing and fundamentals of web page design. So again, the two courses that meet the computer science requirement are fundamentals of computing and fundamentals of web page design. One other way that a student can get a computer science completion here at Fort Dorchester is um, if they take two, the first two levels of our engineering pathway. So you see over here on the right hand side of the presentation, the intro to engineering class. The next level is our principles of engineering. If the student takes both of those classes and successfully passes both of them, that will also be considered a completion of their computer science requirement for high school graduation. So those are your three ways to meet your computer science. Um, we have integrated business applications, which is really going to dive into like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, all of the different applications and Microsoft and really work with those students on how to use those effectively. Um, but that one does not meet, it used to, it, does no, it no longer meets that computer science requirement. We have a business entrepreneurship, marketing, so more in that business pathway. Um, our culinary program. Intro to culinary, lots of students sign up for intro to culinary, okay? And that's at all grade levels. If you sign up for that class, you could get in, but there's a chance you don't get in as a ninth grader. So understand if that's one of your top choices, you want to make sure that you have chosen um, a good alternative that you're gonna be okay with taking because um, I run out of seats every year for intro to culinary and students have to be removed and I start with ninth graders, um, having to remove them um, to open those seats for those upperclassmen. Um, the other class that is um, on here, we have the we have some stuff at the bottom on that um, left hand side that's all at Somerville, um, just so you guys are aware, but I'm not going to dive into any of that. Our sports medicine, it's a great class. 
um, please understand sports medicine one you're not going on the field and wrapping ankles with the baseball team or the football team or anything with sports med one okay sports med one you are learning the basics you are learning the vocabulary you are learning about the injuries you're learning all the bones and the muscles and everything in the body um, it's going to feel very much so like a science class um, because it is, you're learning about the human body and the ways that we could injure ourselves um, through sports. So, um, you know, you have to get through the book work before you can start um, actually putting that, you know, getting to the fun stuff, the hands-on stuff, I should say. Um, same thing with the intro to culinary, just jumping back to that. Intro to culinary, you're not going in the kitchen and cooking the second week of school, okay? Um, you're going to be doing a lot of book, book work. We're going to be working on our, your safe serve certification, which you must have a safe serve certification before you ever step foot in our kitchens here at Fort Dorchester. Um, and so that's a big part of the culinary class, along with like recipe conversions. Um, so it, again, you're, you're not getting that hands on stuff really with any intro class um, with any pathway here at Fort. You've got to get the, the basics down first. Um, Principles of Biomed and Intro to Engineering, those are two of our Project Lead the Way classes. And both of those, those are our only two entry level honors electives. Everything else is at a CP weight, okay? So Principles of Biomed, Intro to Engineering, those are our Project Lead the Way classes and the entry level, these first classes do count as an honors class. That speaks to the rigor of these classes. Principles of Biomed, we're really looking for students that are advanced math and science students. It's a very much so investigative science style class um, and students that are either concur like concurrently taking biology um, are going to be our students who would be most successful in that class. So um, if you're not taking biology your freshman year, you might want to hold off on Principles of Biomed to your sophomore year, which is totally fine. You still have plenty of time to get through that Biomed pathway. Um, intro to engineering, you really want, it's math. Engineering is math. So you're, we're really looking for students that have a strength and an interest in math um, because our students that go in ha haven't completed Algebra 1 yet or just are weaker math students really struggle in intro to engineering as it is math heavy. Um, AP Computer Science, it's the only other AP class besides your AP Human that a freshman can take. It does have a prereq requirement of Algebra 1. So in order to take AP Computer Science Principles, you must have completed Algebra 1 as well. The last two courses on that list are offered at the other school, so I'm not going to dive into those at this time. All right, our fine arts. So we have our performing arts and our visual arts. So starting with our performing arts over on the left-hand side, we have our course Piano or Dance. Um, orchestra, steel drums, um, we've already kind of talked about band a little bit. Understand that you don't, you don't have to have earned the high school credit at the middle school to start these classes, um, but we do ask that you have had some sort of experience before you're jumping into these entry um, level classes. Um, you know, and band, I've already mentioned two classes, two classes of band. Um, and steel drums is another one. Just so you're aware, we run out of seats. I only have so many drums. Um, so I only have so many seats that we can offer each year. And that is a class that we do run out. Um, and we rely very heavily on teacher recommendations from the middle school for those who have been um, participating in the program already um, and making sure that they are dedicated members um, versus, you know, so a dedicated freshman um, versus somebody that's maybe not as dedicated and we're having to make a choice on who's going to get that final seat we're going to go with the teacher recommendation. So eighth graders that are in steel drum right now, make sure that if you have any interest in taking it at the high school level, that you are taking it very seriously right now and um, showing your dedication now as an eighth grader. Um, we have our visual arts. We have um, our art, our 3D design, media arts. Um, so that media arts is more of like a graphic design class. It's going to be on the computers, on the devices, um, creating media style art. Uh, photography, another very, very, very popular class here at Fort. Um, I normally have over 200 requests and I have nowhere near 200 seats um, available in these classes. So um, if you are choosing photography, that's fantastic. I'm not discouraging you from doing that um, because there is a chance you could get in. 
but understand that that is one you want to make sure whatever alternate you are choosing it is something that you are satisfied with taking because the chances are high that you could end up taking that um alternate course um and we do have theater and musical theater here at fort rochester um we don't have as many musical theater students here it's, it doesn't operate as its own class it actually mingles with our current theater classes um, so we're leaning a lot more towards and have just a lot more students in our theater one, two, three, four, and so forth. All right, and our world languages. So a lot of people, a lot of our um, ninth graders come in and think that they have to start their world language their freshman year. Remember, you only get three electives during your freshman year because you got your four core and your high school 101 that only leaves three spots. Um, now, there are students that are ready for this. And by all means, please go ahead and start your world language track or continue your world language track from middle school. That's great. Um, but don't feel rushed into getting into this. We operate our languages um, on more of a semester base, so students can double up in a year. They can take uh, Spanish two and three uh, their junior year if they wanted to and take them back to back. So there's opportunity to take more than one course in a year in order to double up or get ahead or however you would like to manage that. Um, I just want to make sure that I reiterate that you don't have to start your language pathway your freshman year. Um, and while Spanish is our most um, popular requested, especially since it's the only language offered at the middle school, we do have German and we do have French um, fantastic programs here at Fort Rochester. If you've started Spanish one and it really wasn't your jam, maybe you want to consider French or German um, and start a new language here at Fort Rochester. You're not required or obligated to continue on that Spanish pathway. I would also strongly encourage, strongly encourage, if you are finishing a Spanish one class right now in middle school and your child cannot speak any Spanish to you, they may be able to recognize a few words. They may be able to talk about a little bit of verb conjugations and those things. But if they cannot speak any Spanish to you, they are not ready for Spanish 2. The jump from Spanish 1 to Spanish 2 is significant. And we see a lot of our middle schoolers coming over from an 8th grade Spanish 1 to a ninth grade Spanish 2. And they are struggling. Spanish too, you have to speak Spanish. You're going to have to talk out loud in front of your peers to the teacher. You're gonna to have to have one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the teacher for exams. Speaking is a huge piece of it and our students are struggling. So please, please, please think hard um, and consider your options when it comes time for moving forward in your, your world language track um, and making sure that your student is ready for progressing on that track. And this leads me right into one of our options for students who have taken high school classes at the middle school level and what it looks like if they want to retake a class. For example, if you're in Spanish one right now and maybe you're passing the class and you're doing okay, you're doing average in the class, but you cannot speak Spanish at the end of it. So you know you're not ready for Spanish two. This is a good option for you to consider, okay? So students that have taken those high school credit classes at middle school have the opportunity to retake any of those classes at the high school level, okay? Both classes will still appear on your transcript. So even if you fail algebra one and you're retaking, or if you made a D and you're retaking, okay, that D or that F are still going to sit on your transcript, but only the highest final grade in the class will be the one that's calculated into your GPA. Okay, so that Spanish class, you made a 75 in it in middle school, you come to high school, you take Spanish one again, you're not as successful, that doesn't really happen, but if, let's say you're not as successful, you get a 72 as that final grade, that 75 is going to be what is calculated in as a part of your GPA. Um, so that's that's the good thing about the opportunity here to retake these classes and this is just for the jump from middle school to high school. Um, so both courses will still be reflected on your transcript. The highest grade of the two is what will be calculated in your GPA. 
This is a great consideration when you're looking at those classes that build like languages and math classes. Um, it's not a bad option to look at if you're just skating by in that Algebra 1 Honors class right now instead of pushing forward and then getting to geometry or getting to Algebra 2 and really struggling. Um, you might want to look at retaking the class and just building that foundation. You have plenty of time. All right, so um, the last segment that we're going to spend some time on tonight is what about our most advanced options here at Border Tester um, and dual enrollment and those kind of things. So I'm going to hit on a couple of these and then we will wrap up this evening. So the first one here, um, first dual enrollment. So when I say dual enrollment, I mean that you're currently enrolled in high school, but you're also enrolled um, in, an, in an advanced level college program of some sort. So we have our ECPI, the College of Technology, um, and this is a, a, a group of students. We have classes that are available um, to them for three years. We just brought in the sophomore year, so that's really exciting. So they can do sophomore, junior, and senior year with ECPI. Um, and this is for the students that are really interested in computer science, and we're looking at like networking, cybersecurity, um, data software, the, all, of, all of the computer science aspects. So if that's a career field that your, your child is interested in, go ahead and look into ECPI and have those conversations during your ninth grade year with your ninth grade um, counselor um, and get signed up for those classes. It's a great opportunity to walk out of here with lots of certifications um, through ECPI. Um, we have our early college program. Now, this is a group that is started every year during their ninth grade year. It's an application process. There are interviews and teacher recommendations. It's a very involved process, um, but the school selects 30 students to um, begin and move forward with our early college program through Trident Tech. Um, and they will begin taking classes that summer. So the summer between their ninth and 10th grade year, they will start taking those college classes where they will be working with Trident Tech professors um, and taking those classes. And the goal is that by the time that they graduate from Border Chester High School, they are also graduating with their associates from Trident Tech. Um, so this is a great opportunity for, um, for students who may be like first generation college students. Um, you have a great support system to get through uh, here at Border Chester because not only do you have your high school support system, you do have counselors and, and that are working specifically with our early college um, students um, and it's free of charge. So this program is completely free for those 30 students that are hand selected each year. OK, but remember, it's an application interview process, teacher recommendations, um, and it students will take college classes every summer between their, um, their ninth grade year and graduation. Um, and our last advanced program that I'm going to talk about tonight is our AP Capstone Diploma Program. So um, AP I kind of hit on it earlier. It's a college level class. Students can earn college credit if they pass the, the college board exam at the end of the class, which is required for them to take. Um, if they don't pass the exam, doesn't necessarily mean they don't pass a class. So they could pass the class, earn the credit for the high school. Earning that college credit is based solely on that exam at the end of the class. Um, but it also, passing that exam impacts their ability to become an AP capstone diploma um, candidate. So, um, this is a way to move that college resume, and that's what I call them because that's really what they've turned into nowadays, um, to the top of the stack. It's another feather in your cap. It's a great way to set yourself apart from the student who just may have taken a few AP classes. You're showing that you're a little bit more well-rounded and can dive in a little bit deeper. You can see the four things that it's really um, focusing on, um, that you're able to handle all of this. It's, it, it's another box that you can check that's just going to move that resume application right to the top of the stack. Um, so it does require you to take in two AP classes. So you got your AP seminar first. You must take the class, pass the class, pass the exam, then move on to that AP research class. Same thing, take the class, pass the class, pass the exam. Um, and then you get to choose four other um, AP classes of your choice. So I like the fact that the students have a lot of choice in those four other ones because maybe you're more of a math science kid. So you want those four areas to be more in our math and science options. Um, maybe you're more of a history buff and you really want to focus on our histories. We do even have some art options. We have our music theory. We have AP art, um, the two different um, studio arts. 
Um, and then we have AP Art History as well. So we even have some for our more artistic families out there, which is a fantastic. So there's three artistic ones. Um, so you really, it's more of like an a la carte approach um, in choosing what are your strengths um, to really focus on which will help you get those college credits in classes that are of interest to you, which are probably going to relate to a career field of your choice. So you can go ahead and start getting ahead in those classes as well for the college. Diploma of Distinction. Um, this isn't like an advanced pathway, but this is something that Dorchester District 2 offers to our students. Um, and so this is a this is a local. This is just a Dorchester District 2 um, opportunity. This is not statewide, so it's something that our board has approved and it is a great um, um, distinction for our students to work towards. So you can see the requirements here. Um, your GPA requirement, your testing scores. Notice that it's going to require you to have those 32 credits, not just the 24, which if you think about it, even if you started fresh, had no high school credits, your ninth grade year coming in, you have eight opportunities every year. 10 for 32. So you saw you have plenty of time to meet that requirement. Um, there's also ways to um, through evening school or virtual SC summer classes that you can take to also earn more credits. Um, you can see that we um, they've got to have um, certain number of credits at an advanced level. They uh, must earn at least the three credits in a world language. Um, definitely want to have um, community service and um, your school sponsored organization. Just a pro tip for our parents that students are who are on track to go to college. I would advise for them coming into their ninth grade year, find a way to go ahead and keep track of their um, school organization involvement and community service hours. Even if it's like just like a little notepad that you keep next to the, you know, in the kitchen, next to the fridge, or if it's a document that you keep um, in a file for your kid on your computer, um, you know, when it comes time to start applying for these colleges and they're going to ask about community service and involvement, it's going to be really hard to try and track back and remember four years ago, well, they did work that bake sale. What organization was that for and how many hours? And so, you know, if you keep a running track now, um, you will be much more set up to be prepared to answer a lot of those questions on college applications. Just just a little little side tip for you there. Um, so Diploma of Distinction, great honor that a lot of our students work for. Um, one other thing to note on here, they must have four social studies. You'll notice and in four sciences. Remember, if you think back to the high school diploma requirements, three sciences, three social studies classes. But for the Diploma of Distinction, they have to have four. So. Um, one each year should be kind of what you're thinking. That is a whole lot of information that I just threw at you at one time. So good news is that number one, this has been recorded and it will be available to be viewed again and you can fast forward to the parts that you want to see again. Um, number two, we are also going to have a listing of the questions that are being typed out and answered as I have been going through the presentation tonight and that will be available um, to those who attended and those who were not able to attend. All of that should be posted by the end of the week. It will be posted on your middle school social media and websites. It will also be posted on Fort Rochester's high, um, the, our website and our social media platforms. If you're not following those, I would advise that you go ahead and follow those now as we will as the end of the year gets closer, we will be promoting events that um, our future four members are definitely welcome to attend. Um, I've also listed our contact information here. So um, again, I'm Megan Prophet, the Assistant Principal Master Scheduler here at Fort Rochester. Jamie Gowen is who has been working hard to try and get through those questions you guys have been answering in the chat. Um, Mr. Davenport, he's here with us tonight and he is also available to answer questions. Um, Ms. Sanders is another ninth grade administrator. I did not list her contact information here as most of tonight is about scheduling, um, but she is, her contact information is available on the website. It does say ninth grade administrator. She's a great contact. She's a former counselor, so she's got a great background um, to be able to advise you guys as well as you may have questions that come up prior to your IGP or after your IGP. IGP. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here to support you and make sure that you're starting out on the best foot possible um, next year here at Border Chester High School. 
Um, Ms. Gowen, do we need to keep it open for a little bit longer to finish up some questions? Okay. So we're going to keep this live event on for about another 10 minutes or so while we wrap up answering the questions that have come in in the chat field. Um, again, if you didn't get your question answered um, or you think of something later, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and, and we may end up adding your question to our document before we post it by the end of the week. Thank you so much for your, your time this evening and we're looking forward to the class of 2025 joining us in August. See you all soon.